Ryan going at 7 o'clock. Good evening and welcome to Wilson uh, Central School District's Board of Education meeting, uh, Tuesday, March 14, 2023. As I usually say at the beginning, if you're with us, you have the ability to do a public comment during, during our public forum. If you're not uh, with us and you're watching this live or after the fact, you have the ability to call in to the district clerk, 716-751-9399. Comment from the board uh, to the board, or if you have a question or concern, this is about our district clerk. We'll make sure that uh, gets that to the the board in our weekly communications. This time, I'll turn the board meeting over to our board president, Mr. Waters. Thank you, Superintendent Carter. Please stand. I'd like to just triple A. I'm say somewhere. And to the Republic for which it stands. Nation, under, under God, God indivisible. indivisible. Board members, under 1B, it's dated February 28th, 2020. Aye. Under 2A, resolved that the Wilson Central School District Board of Education approved the following. Second. 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 Number election B. May 16th. No. Second. Aye. And the election of electors for the twenty. Thank you. 
Thank you, President Waters. <clears throat> I have a conference report for January 19, 2023 from Cerno Research Research Teacher. Expectations attending the research seminar helping your support if possible for my students today. Our instructor, Dale Johnson, we received research-based classroom improvement accelerated strategies to assist our offer us numerous strategies to improve We're given many resources electronically that include instructional materials, practical teaching activities. We're given many assignment ideas that help our more students. Students successful. Check once both. The issue with the course was that there wasn't much discussion among the instructor. It was mostly instructor based, which shared these strategies and resources with the English department from grade six through twelve with the hopes that we would meet. Any of the summer seminar was worthy time. I think 
Uh, there's a blood drive taking place on March 20th. The varsity girls basketball marathon. Unfortunately, we lost, and I know I'm biased, but it was just... And we hung with a team that was just... Sunday. Unfortunately, we had a new student. First, um, I helped her as well as many of the The language was... English, man, hot, and it's just like amazing. Um, spring sports just started on March 13th, yesterday. Exciting. On Thursday, March 16th, both middle school and high school. Welcome, those of you that are with us this evening, and those of you that are in our virtual land, and thank you for uh, spending some time with us. I want to congratulate the winter sports and all of our students for success in the winter months. Look forward to spring, and hopefully we'll spring very quickly. <laughs> We're looking forward to outside sports. A um, couple things. Savan wrote a little note to me to remind everybody that the Board of Education board budget vote and election tab on the district website. There is one there and if you it has all the relevant information that you may need uh, for citizens interested in running for a seat on the school board. Candidate packets are available in the district office at this time. Um, Madison kind of gave a little bit of an introduction into the uh, coming days here, the 16th and the 17th of uh, March. On the 16th of March, Tom Cody, national speaker, uh, motivator, is gonna be here working with our students during the school day from pre-K right through grade 12 or kindergarten through grade 12, different times doing presentations with them. In the evening of the 16th, we're gonna have our family resource night. The district is hosting this free family resource night and spaghetti dinner. On Thursday and 16th, 5.30 in the evening, the night will begin with a presentation by veteran educator Tom Cody for parents and their older children. While kids K-12 will be treated to activities in the gym, I think we're going to be at the library in um, this section, not in the gym. Afterwards, the attendees will enjoy spaghetti dinner and have a chance to visit vendors for a free resource night, so local community service organizations, local resources, where we set up the tables. We have a ton of peace vendors coming, setting up the tables, giving information out on, on different resources that are in the area. Um, the deadline for registration is passed, but I'm sure we'll take a few walk-ins if you haven't signed up. Please stop by on the 16th at 5.30. It should be a great evening. Um, this is Oliveri, myself, and President Waters this morning, bright and early at 8.30, had a meeting with Assemblyman, Assemblyman Norris, um, who is currently in Albany, and regaled us with us how much he was looking forward to the nasty snow they were going to get um, that was hopefully going to bypass us. 
But as part of that meeting, um, the three of us kind of talked with him about um, our Wilson priorities. So we do a legislative breakfast with all the legislators. That's all of the dis districts in Niagara County meet with them to kind of talk about the priorities. And then usually the three of us meet with Senator Norris, or excuse me, Assemblyman Norris and Senator Orr to more specifically talk about Wilson's. And I just want to take a, a little bit of time and I will put these priorities board members in our um, in our news and notes, but they're basically a culmination of things we've been talking about over um, the many years that in, in this current school year. So we we talked about the digital divide and the call for more cell towers, hardwired broadband, and how the fact that you know, especially out in our area, there's just an inequity in the quality and the ability for our students to be able to have internet at home. We talked about permanently increasing the unappropriated fund balance. We currently, as a school district, district can only have a bank account of four percent of our entire budget. When state, local governments can carry much more, we talked about increasing that to six or eight percent or ten percent. Because when those unexpected costs come in, that's very difficult for a school board, and they're not budgeted items. It's different for difficult for a school district to be able to afford those things. We talked about supporting the ongoing financial assistance and academic support programs added because of federal assistance. There's going to be a deep, steep cliff coming up very soon in another year. If those are federal assistance dollars are not going to be with us. And I think it's part of our obligation as a school district to advocate to the state that uh, we need uh, school districts need assistance. So that's not such a steep cliff. We've been advocating for years, and it's just a matter of them putting a pen while uh, creating a special ed reserve. One of the Biggest drastic unpredictable cost in the district is the amount of money we spend on special ed. We can't predict it from year to year. One family moving into the district with a number of students that have special needs can sway your budget one way or another. So uh, we've had, had been advocated for a uh, special education. As we talked about when we did our forum at the beginning of the year, um, we were going to continue to advocate um, for a dedicated funding source or VOCES service aid uh, for school safety and uh, a school resource officer. We talked long about that with him is that, you know, the, the cost, of, while we can certainly say that the the, uh, the resource of having a school resource officers in district is needed, um, we should not, as a school district, have to be taking on the burden of the entire cost of that. There just should be some aid on that or at least some assistance in the payment. Um, we currently have capital outlay projects. The one that's going on right now is updating the sound and the audio. That's the same thing. This audio and lighting of the uh, auditorium at the high school. <laughs> and the current cap on capital outlay projects is $100,000. And that's a drop in the bucket when you're doing construction. We'd like to have that raised to 250. Um, we want to, you know, as a district, we want to continue to advocate for support and resources and funding for student mental health and substance abuse uh, resources. Everyone but the legislators, um, they understand that they need to take action on school nutrition and universal meals. And I've not met one person that didn't think kids should have free meals in school is a, is a bad idea. I have not met one person. The action just needs to be taken. Um, we talked a lot about local control um, and making sure that there's no vaccine mandate. This idea of electric buses needs to go away. It, you know, as sound as it is, we just do not have the funding, the ability to be able to deal with electric buses and everything that goes into it. We talked about local control over EPPR and local control over suspensions, uh, student suspensions. And then the last two are just dollars and cents. It's tax cap. Uh, Modifications and the foundation aid formula modifications, which have more to do with the board and their budget and things like that. So, board members, those are uh, the things that we talked about today with uh, Assembly Norris. We are meeting, we were supposed to meet with uh, Senator Ort today, but he rescheduled, and I can't remember the date, but it's coming up soon, and we will do another meeting with him to talk about the same thing. Um, and, board members, that's my superintendent. 
Thank you, uh, Superintendent Carter. It's always great when I can start a day off talking to a politician. It's <laughs> probably why I didn't sleep very well last night. But um, I mean, at at the end of one of the worst things that I heard from the assemblyman today was that he doesn't anticipate an on-time budget. Um, everyone sitting in this table and probably most are in this room are well aware that we have laws that we have to abide to and we have to pass a budget as a group of trustees and put it out in front of the public so that they can vote on it. It would be wonderful if our state legislators allowed us or afforded us that same opportunity to take a look at their budget and vote on it. Um, anyway, I try not to get on a soapbox. So, um, Let's not expect it to be here on time, which means our business official, Mrs. Oliveri, will have to put forth the budget. For us, we will adopt for the state adopt theirs, um, which is which is great. So we um, we hope our crystal ball or Mrs. Oliveri's crystal ball is is correct. Um, and that's really about all I have to say about that. Uh, I appreciate both of you being available for that. Um, and I and I. Don't want to make light of I, I do appreciate Assemblyman Norris's time um, for what it's worth for here in the South. Um, board members, do you have anything this evening? I will open it up for a public forum. If anybody would like to address the board, please state your name and address prior and keep your comments brief. A lot of rush to the microphone. Mm -hmm. Board members, we do have need for an executive session uh, this evening for uh, specific personnel items. I have a motion for executive session. Is there a second? Second. All in favor? Aye. Any opponents for an executive session? Thank you for coming to the state plan. Mm -hmm. Yeah. <laughs> 